Okay, so in this video, we're going to prove that the derivative of the sine of x is equal to cosine of x. And we're going to resort to first principles or the definition of the derivative to help us do this. But before we do, let's revise the graphs of sine x and cosine of x. So on the turquoise curve here, we have the function sine of x. And the orange curve is the cosine of x. Now in earlier mathematics, you may have noted that the slope at this local maximum of the sine curve, so this tangent line to the curve, has a slope of zero. And this occurs at the value of x of pi on 2, when x equals 0, the tangent curve has a slope of 1. When x equals pi, the tangent line has a slope of negative 1. And if we look at the corresponding points of the cosine curve, we see that cosine has a value of 1 here, which is the same as the slope of the sine curve at x equals 0. At x equals pi on 2, the cosine has a value of 0, which is the same as the slope of the sine curve at x equals pi on 2. At x equals pi, cosine has a corresponding value of negative 1, which is the same as the slope of negative 1 of the sine curve. At 3 pi on 2, the slope again is equal to 0, with a corresponding value on the cosine curve of 0. And when x equals 2 pi, the slope again is equal to 1, and cosine of x equals 1. So you may infer from this that the derivative of the sine of x, which gives us the slope at any value of x, is equal to cosine of x. But unfortunately, in mathematics, inferring is not good enough. We actually have to show proof, and that's what we're setting out to do in this video. So let's go back to first principles, to the definition of the derivative, which is the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the f of the function x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. This expression here is by definition the derivative of the function f of x. So therefore the derivative of the sine of x, and just to avoid confusion, I should write it in df dx notation as well. So the derivative of the sine of x by the definition of the derivative is equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the sine of x plus delta h, sorry, delta x minus the sine of x all over delta x. Okay, so we're going to manipulate this expression now using trigonometric identities. Actually, the specific one that I'm looking for is the sum difference formula, which is sine of u plus v is equal to sine of u by cosine of v plus cosine of u by sine of v. Okay, so before I manipulate this expression here, if we apply the limit as it is, if we try to apply the limit as it is, on the top, as delta x approaches 0, this just equals 0, so we'll have sine x minus sine x, so the top becomes equal to 0. 
and the bottom also becomes equal to zero. So we have a case then of zero divided by zero, which we can't determine mathematically. So that's why we need to use this manipulation here. So let's do that. So the expression that we're finding the limit for becomes, if we apply the sum difference formula, is sine of x cosine of delta x plus cosine of x by the sine of delta x. So that's taken care of this term. We can copy the rest, sine of x over delta x, and we maintain the limit at the front. So now this is equal to, if I factor out a sine of x between the first term and the last term, I will have sine of x outside of cosine of delta x minus 1, and let's leave the rest. So we still have cosine of x by the sine of x, sorry, sine of delta x, divided by delta x. And of course we copy the limit at the front as well. Okay, so now I can separate these two into two limits, and we can split the denominator. So let's write the first limit as, so it's all equal, the first limit is the limit as delta x approaches zero of the sine of x by cos of delta x minus 1 all over delta x plus the second limit of delta x approaches zero of the cosine of x by the sine of x, sorry, the sine of delta x. I keep on saying that. Okay, so now note that the sine of x is not affected by the limit because it doesn't contain the term delta x, and neither does the cosine of x. So on the next line, let's write these terms out the front. So we have the sine of x by the limit as delta x approaches zero of cos of delta x minus 1 over delta x plus cosine of x by the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the sine of delta x. And my apologies, we're supposed to have a delta x on the bottom here in case you wonder where that went, and similarly down here as well. Alright, so let's deal with this limit here, because it is familiar, because in a previous video, which I'll link in the top right hand corner here now, we found that this limit goes to 1, so we have cosine of x by 1. Now we have to work out what this limit is, and again we have the same problem as above, because if we... Uh, Approach zero here, cosine of delta x, the limit as delta x approaches zero is equal to one. So we have one minus one on the top, which is zero, and delta x approaches zero, so we have zero divided by zero again. So we're going to have to manipulate this one a little bit. So let's do that. Let's uh, multiply this expression by its conjugate by the conjugate of the numerator, top and bottom. So I multiply it by cosine of delta x plus 1 on the top and the same on the bottom. Yeah, this magenta is looking quite contrasting. Let's change color. Let's go back to the lighter cyan. So if I expand the terms on the top, I will have the difference of two squares, so it's cosine squared of delta x minus 1, and let's just uh, group the two terms on the bottom. So we have delta x by cosine of delta x plus 1. So if we use the Pythagorean identity that 
cos squared of x, cos squared of anything for that matter, plus the sine squared of anything is equal to 1, then we can rearrange this to be cos squared of x minus 1 is equal to negative sine squared of x. So the top line becomes negative sine squared of delta x divided by delta x by cos of delta x plus 1. And let's apply the limit. So we have the limit as delta x approaches 0 of this, the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the second line, and finally, well not finally because there is a few more steps, but the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the negative sine squared of delta x divided by delta x outside of cos of delta x plus 1. Okay, so let's do some further separation. So on the top, I can write this as negative sine of delta x by the sine of delta x. And I'm going to factor out this delta x to be on the bottom of the first sine term. The second sine term, I'll leave it as cosine of delta x plus 1. And we have the limit of that. And by our limit laws, I can actually split this into the product of two limits. So I can write this as limit of delta x approaches 0 of the first limit. The negative can come out the front. So we have sine of delta x divided by delta x by the limit of delta x approaches 0 of sine of x sine of delta x, here I go again, divided by cos of delta x plus 1. And we're nearly there because we know that the first limit goes to 1, so we have negative 1 by, so that's the first limit done. The second limit, the top term goes to 0 as delta x approaches 0. On the bottom, as delta x approaches 0, cosine goes to 1, plus 1. So we have negative 1 by 0 on 2, which equals negative 1 by 0, which of course equals 0. So yep, we've done a lot of work to just show that the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of delta x minus 1 divided by delta x, and we've got the sine of x in front of here, plus the cosine of x by the limit of delta x approaches 0 of the sine of x, sine of delta x, divided by delta x. So let's put the derivative in front. The derivative of the sine of x in the front is equal to that. So as I said, we've done a lot of work to show that this is equal to 0. So we have sine of x by 0 plus the cosine of x. And this one is equal to 1, which of course is equal to just the cosine of x. Well, so we have used first principles to prove that the derivative of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x. Now that'll do it for this video. If you found it useful, like this video and share it on social media with all your study mates and make this channel famous. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you can afford to, I'd really appreciate any small donation you can make. And you can do that via PayPal in the link in the description because, because helping me out in any small way will allow me to make more videos for you. So thank you in advance. Thank you for watching. Best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you on the next video.